Welcome to the Certified Business Enterprise CBE Program Webinar presented by the District of Columbia's Department of Small and Local Business Development. The mission of the Department of Small and Local Business Development is to support the development, economic growth, and retention of district-based businesses and to promote economic development throughout the district's commercial corridors. DSLBD envisions a business environment which DC businesses are connected in real time with local, federal, and global business opportunities. Small businesses can navigate government quickly, confidently, and effectively. And every entrepreneur and small business with a great idea and a great plan has the capital to make it happen. DSLBD is comprised of two program areas and seven divisions. In this section, you will be provided with a brief overview of the CBE program goals and certification process. The Business Certification Division evaluates businesses headquartered in the district to determine their eligibility to become a Certified Business Enterprise, or CBE. Nonprofits are not eligible for CBE certification. The DC government directs spending to CBE businesses, which support and contributes to job creation and strengthening of the local economy. The CBE program provides contracting preferences for local businesses so they can better compete for DC government contracts and procurement opportunities. In this section, we will review the certification categories and the qualifications needed in order to become CBE certified. This chart highlights a comprehensive list of CBE categories. Businesses may be certified in any of the following categories, however, only a maximum of 12 points can be applied toward any contract award. In evaluating requests for bids, contracting personnel apply a percentage reduction in price according to CBE designation. In evaluating requests for proposals, contracting personnel apply points toward proposal evaluations according to CBE designation. DSLBD also certifies joint ventures, which are project specific. In order to be eligible for the CBE program, you must meet the Local Business Enterprise or LBE definition. The Local Business Enterprise definition is as follows. The principal office for the business must be located in the District of Columbia. The chief executive officer and highest level managerial employees of the business must perform their managerial functions in their principal office located in the district. In addition to satisfying the above, a business must meet one of the four following standards. More than 50% of the employees are residents of the district, or the owners of more than 50% of the business enterprise are residents of the district, or more than 50% of the assets, excluding bank accounts, are located in the district, or more than 50% of the business enterprise's gross receipts are district gross receipts, and can demonstrate one of the following is properly licensed under DC law or is subject to tax under DC law chapter 18 of title 47 or the business enterprise is a business enterprise identified in the DC official code 47-1808.011 through 5 and more than 50% of the business is owned by residents of the district how does DSLBD define a principal office a principal office is defined as the primary location based upon the totality of the business activities in which a routine and essential business functions occur, such as bookkeeping and record keeping, payroll maintenance, receipt of business telephone calls and correspondence, storage of books and records, directing, controlling, and coordinating activities and policies by officers, principals, and managers. In order to be considered a principal office, the business must own or lease the office for a minimum of 12 months. Month-to-month -month leases are not accepted. Businesses utilizing executive or incubator office spaces must have dedicated office space to meet this requirement. In addition, all signage and or printed material for the business must display the principal office location. It is important to note if the business owns or leases other locations outside of the district, the business cannot have more employees reporting to or working from any single location outside of the district. 
Once a business meets the local business enterprise definition, it can apply for the following categories. Small Business Enterprise, or SBE, category. In order to qualify for this category, businesses must satisfy the following. Must be independently owned, operated, and controlled, and must meet the U.S. Small Business Administration definition of a small business concern under the Small Business Act and have an average annualized gross receipt for prior three years not exceeding the following limits listed below. Please take this opportunity to review this listing and see if this applies to your business. The next CBE category we will review is the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise or DBE category. Please note this designation is not associated with the federal DBE program and this program is race and gender neutral. Businesses must meet the following standards in order to qualify for this category. The business must be more than 50% owned, operated, and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. An individual is socially disadvantaged if he or she has been subjected to prejudice or bias because of his or her identity as a member of a group without regards to qualities as an individual. An individual is economically disadvantaged if their ability to compete in the free market system is impaired because of diminished opportunities to obtain capital and credit as compared to others in the same line of business. Note, the personal net worth of the applicant must be less than $1 million, excluding the value of his or her primary residence and the value of his or her ownership interest in the CBE. Resident-owned business is a business that is owned by an individual who is or a majority of individuals who are subjected to personal income tax solely in the district. Enterprise zone is a business with its principal office located in a designated enterprise zone of the district. Enterprise zones are areas of the city that are targeted by law for increased economic development activity. Long-time resident business is a business that has been continuously eligible for certification as a local business enterprise for 20 consecutive years, or has qualified as a small business enterprise that has been continuously eligible for certification for 15 consecutive years. To qualify, business tax returns should be submitted to meet this requirement. If a business is missing tax returns for any year, they may submit previous DSLBD certification approvals or verification from the Office of Tax and Revenue. Veteran-owned business is a business that meets the definition of a small business enterprise and is no less than 51% owned and operated by one or more veterans. Veteran means a person who served in the active military, naval, or air service and who has not been discharged or released under dishonorable conditions. In the case of any publicly owned business, no less than 51% of the stock must be owned by one or more veterans, and one or more veterans control the management and daily operations of the business. Local Manufacturing Enterprise is an enterprise who makes a product through a process involving raw materials, components, or assemblies, usually on a large scale with different operations divided among different workers, and manufactures only in the district. To recap, here are some of the key points to take away from this section. Businesses may receive a maximum of 12 preference points or percentage reduction of price applied to any contract award. The business principal office must be located in the district. The CEO and highest level managerial employees must perform their managerial functions in their principal office in the district. Residential and business lease terms of tenancy must show a minimum of 12 months or one year. Month-to-month -month leases are not accepted. Nonprofits are not eligible for CBE certification. Businesses who are small women-owned and minority-owned, SWAM, certified by the Commonwealth of Virginia may not be eligible for CBE certification. Before we continue to the next section, let's take a moment to test your knowledge. In this section, we will review the required documents specific to the business structure and CBE categories. While applying for the CBE certification program, businesses are required to upload supporting documents specific to the business structure and the certification categories selected. An application will be deemed incomplete if the business fails to produce required documents. Incomplete applications will be closed, causing the business to have to restart the certification process. 
The listing of sample supporting documents can be found in the handout section of this webinar. Please note, this list is just a guide, a complete and accurate list specific to your business structure and selected CBE categories will be generated once you begin the online application. We will discuss this further in the next section. Required Documents New Business Businesses less than a year old must also submit a business plan. There is no required format for the business plan, however, it must demonstrate the company's strategic approach to doing business. Additionally, businesses less than a year old must also submit proof of a business bank account, example, business bank statement. The account balance does not have to reflect any specific amount in order to meet this requirement. Supporting Business Documents Recap To recap, here are some of the key points to take away from this section. The online application checklist will provide an accurate list of documents required for submission. Businesses less than a year old must submit a business plan demonstrating the company's strategic approach to doing business and proof of capital injection business bank statement. Please refer to the handout section of this webinar for a sample listing of required documents. Before we continue to the next section, let's take a moment to test your knowledge. In this section, we will show you how to access and navigate the online application. DSLBD will not accept any mailed or hand-delivered applications. Please note, the online application is only compatible with Internet Explorer, and as a reminder, applications not submitted within 30 calendar days will be automatically deleted. To access the online application, visit the DSLBD website at www.dslbd.dc.gov. Once you have accessed the DSLBD homepage, click on the Get Certified tab at the top of the screen. The next page you will see provides a brief overview of the CBE program requirements. To begin the online application, click the New Applicant hyperlink on the left side of the page. You will then be redirected to the CBE online web portal. Once on the CBE Business online web page, click the Register button to create a user account. Please only submit one entry per business. On the registration page, enter the business contact and key personnel information. You can also create your username and password. Please be sure to keep your username and password for future reference. You will need this information again when making changes to your business profile, recertifying, or applying for upgrades. To request username and or password resets, the owner, principal, or secondary contact may contact a member of the certification team via telephone at 202-727-3900 or send a request to cbe.feedback at dc.gov. Click Start Certification to begin the application. The purpose of the CBE Program Terms and Conditions page is to verify whether or not a business qualifies for the CBE Program. Please note, inaccurate responses will result in the closure or denial of the application. Select the appropriate responses and agree to the terms to proceed. On this page, select your business structure, CBE categories, and identify if the business has other affiliated entities through common ownership, management, or control. In the last field, enter the date the business was established. By clicking the Show Checklist tab, you will be able to review the system-generated checklist of documents required for your certification. The application checklist reflects an accurate list of required documents based on your business structure and your CBE categories selected. If this list is not accurate, click the Back button to return to the previous page to add, change, or remove your selections. Select I agree to continue with the application. On this screen, the information you entered on the registration page is populated into the application. The principal and secondary contacts of the business must be entered in the required fields. These contacts will receive all communications sent by DSLBD. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. You may also begin uploading your required documents by clicking on the Upload Checklist Items tab.
Checklist items containing multiple documents should be combined and scanned as a single file prior to uploading. On this screen, enter the primary business activity by percentage. The total services provided should equal 100%. You are also required to enter the Dunn and Bradstreet number for the business. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, you are required to enter the dollar amount of the business total fixed assets. In the next field, enter the business gross revenues for the last three years. If the business has less than three years of revenues, only input the revenues applicable for the business. In the third field, identify the sources in which the business has received said revenues and enter the dollar amounts if applicable. In the final field, enter in the last three contracts awarded and performed by the business if applicable. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. On this screen, provide a detailed description of the business's primary trade and services in the highlighted fields. This information will be presented to the general public on the DSLBD website. By clicking the Edit NIGP Code button, you will be able to search for the National Institute of Government Purchasing Commodity Codes, NIGP codes, relative to services the business offers. Please note, when selecting NIGP codes, only select codes which can be demonstrated by past performances. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, you can select NIGP codes by keyword and or code number. Here the term carpentry is used as an example. Click Search to locate the NIGP code. Based on the term entered, the search generated specific codes. To select a code, by clicking the checkbox to the left of the code and then select Add. Note, DSLBD does not approve codes ending in 00-00. Click the Apply Changes button and the selections will be saved to the application. All selected NIGP codes will now be displayed on the application screen. Select Save and Continue to proceed to the next step. On this screen, enter the business's office equipment, vehicles owned, and storage space. Each item must be entered individually. Click the Add button to save the item. Repeat this step to add additional items. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon on the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, enter all office locations and warehouse or storage facilities used by the business. Each location must be entered individually. Click the Add button to save the item. Repeat this step to add additional items. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon in the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, enter the total number of employees, owners, and stockholders for the business. When entering employees, please exclude 1099 or contract employees. Click the Add button to save the entry. Repeat this step to add additional entries. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon in the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, provide a list of the business board of directors. Enter the individual board members and his or her title, home address, and telephone number, and the date in which the member was appointed. Click the Add button. The information entered will populate below in a new field. Repeat this step for any additional member being added. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon in the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, provide a list of the business corporate officers or key personnel. Enter the individual and his or her title, home address, and telephone number, and the date the officer was appointed. Click the Add button. The information entered will populate below in a new field. Repeat this step for any additional officer being added. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon in the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. On this screen, enter the business's bonding information if applicable. If this information is not applicable to your business, proceed to the next page. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. Here you are required to enter the insurance information for the business. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. 
Here you are required to enter the business banking information. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. On this screen, enter the total taxes paid to the district government if applicable. For fields that do not apply to your business, enter zeros. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. On this screen, select only the categories applicable to your business. Multiple selections are permitted. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. On this screen, enter the licenses held by the business. Your business may be required to maintain multiple licenses depending on the services offered. Click the Add button for each license. Repeat the step for any additional licenses being added. You can update or delete your entry by clicking the icon in the Update or Delete field. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next application page. The questions displayed on this page allow you to present any additional information about the business, such as work performed on any contracts, secondary offices, or locations, and certifications the business may hold. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. This page serves as the application affidavit. This page should be completed and attested by the majority business owner. Please note, inaccurate responses can lead to denial of the business's application. Click Save and Continue to proceed to the next page. You can also view and upload checklist items by clicking the hyperlink View Upload Checklist Items. By clicking the View Upload Checklist Items hyperlink, you can upload your documents to the application. To successfully complete the upload, click the radio button in the left-hand column. Click the Browse button to locate the corresponding file. Once the file has been located and populated in the field, click Upload File. Checklist items containing multiple documents should be combined and scanned as a single file prior to uploading. Documents requiring a signature should be manually signed by the highest level managerial employee before uploading. Password protected documents are not accepted. Verify the accuracy and readability of your documents before uploading and submitting to the application. When the document is successfully uploaded, the checklist will display as a blue hyperlink. Only one upload will be accepted per checklist item. To verify the upload, click the hyperlink. If you need to replace the file, click the radio button in the left-hand column and then click Delete File. Once the required documents have been successfully uploaded, click I Agree. This will complete your upload. After you have uploaded your checklist items, click the Submit Final Application button. Once you select the button, you will not be able to change any information you have entered. If you discover an error, contact the Certification Specialist at 202-727-3900. On this screen, you can track the status of the application and your assigned specialist by clicking the Details tab highlighted in the field. Here is a snapshot of the application status once you select the Details tab. To recap, here are some of the key points to take away from this section. To access the online application, visit www.dslbd.dc.gov. The certification process can take up to 45 business days from the date of submission. The application status can be tracked through your online account. The online application is only compatible with Internet Explorer. Applications not submitted within 30 calendar days are automatically deleted from the system. Required checklist documents are specific to the business structure and CBE categories selected. Checklist items containing multiple documents should be combined and scanned as a single file prior to uploading. Documents requiring a signature, including tax returns, should be signed before uploading. Password-protected documents are not accepted. Verify the accuracy and readability of your documents before uploading and submitting to the application. Requests for username and or password resets should be sent to cbe.feedback at dc.gov. Before we conclude this webinar, let's take a moment to test your knowledge.